soak them. Where do they get, the better I like it. There's no money under those umbrellas. A lot of goops crawling around in the rain. <laughs> That's a laugh. I ain't even got an umbrella. Seven bucks. The last of the Mohicans. Mm, looks like I gotta promote something. Look at her go. Come on, baby, roll them out. Yeah, that's what this town is. A dice game. Come on, you seven. Rain me a seven. You don't get me sevens holding out a tin cup, brother. There must be a seven rolling for me somewhere. wasn't good enough for her. Then comes the, the laugh. You weren't good enough either. But Hopper's money, that was plenty good enough. The money that the fat man made by working hard night and day, that was fine for her. She didn't mind stealing this money, huh? She didn't steal anything. It was me. Look at him. He still loves her. Answer me, you still love her. She gave the money to Mr. Morgan, didn't she? That's what you stole money for, so she should give it to the man she loves. Here's his announcement. We are pleased to announce the opening of Dan Morgan's beauty parlor, March 30th. You're going to see her tonight again. Free this time. Shouldn't cost me anything. You're going to tell her that Hopper wants us $3,000 back. You're going to tell her that if Hopper don't get it back, he's going to call the police in the morning to send his partner and his partner's wife to jail, both together. I got the right, I got the evidence. That's all. Tomorrow morning, six o'clock, I'll be sitting in my office. And you'll bring me the money from her and tell her that Hopper isn't at her feet crying, but standing up with a policeman beside him, waiting to arrest you and her together. Six o'clock in my office. Three thousand dollars. That's all right. Keep the change.
Check your things, sir. Court, please. Excuse me. Cigarettes? Twenty dollars. Just a moment, I'll get your change. Never mind. Keep the change. Gee, thanks. Have you any reservations? No. Emil. Find a good table for this gentleman. Right this way, sir. Have a good time, sir. Wasn't that the strangest thing? Twenty dollars and without even giving me a second look and I thought he was some sort of a tramp. Just goes to show you can't trust your eyes in this town. Do you know him, Vincent? No, I never saw him before. But I knew he was somebody the way he looked at me. Hello, Sunset Hotel? Room 1007, please. Bill O'Brien calling. <laughs> Hello, Dutch. Bill O'Brien. Say, listen, I'm uh, over at the Pigeon Club taking in the sights and uh, ran into something I thought might be of mutual interest to us. Yeah, an out-of-town job just came snowshoeing in here a while ago and throwing money around like birdseed. No, I never saw him before. Strictly a hick. Hmm? Say, I wouldn't fool a pal like you, Dutch. I tell you, this is a blue plate special. I thought I'd like to bring him over for a little get-together. On the same percentage as last time. Bill O'Brien, what about him? Nice guy, Chief. He's got a room down the hall. Used to be a bellhop at the St. Martin. Got a lot on the ball. Okay, Chief. Twelve o'clock at the sunset. Okay. Very funny, I could have sworn you were Mr. White. Do you mind if I sit down a moment? No. I'm not intruding, I hope. They have a nice show here, very artistic, isn't it? I'm not trying to pull anything, really. I'll be very frank with you. I knew you weren't Mr. White. In fact, there is no Mr. White. It's just a name I made up. Who I'm really looking for is Mr. Hugo. He's the one who puts on the show here, engages all the talent, you know. You see, I used to know Mr. Hugo.